Hey, what's up guys? So Strike here, and uh, if my hair looks a little lighter, it's because I finally got to wash it today. Yay! Um, the purple's still coming out though. It, it's come. It, it's on my hands because I keep messing with. Because I'm always messing with my hair in some way. Because it's still not really doing what it's supposed to do like it normally did with a big floofiness. It's going to take a little while for it to get back. But today I'm going to talk to you guys about marriage. Uh, this is going to be an interesting little vloggity vlog of mine. I have been married for over seven years now. Wow. <laughs> I honestly didn't think I would be married this long. I didn't think I would have gotten married when I did get married at such a young age because I got married at 19 and a 19 year old, what they think is marriage versus what a 26 year old is going through when it comes to marriage, two very different things. They are, I've learned quite a bit in these last almost decade and there I guess there's some things that you guys out there who are about to get married or who are just dating or who would like to get married or who are just thinking about it some things you need to know um because I've met a lot of people who had no idea what they were getting themselves into and I was like you're in for a surprise because it's nothing compared to what books and tv shows and animes and video games and it's not at all what they describe there's no such thing as an actual real marriage when it comes to that bullshit that's all fake here's kind of a few things that i've learned a few things that i am yet to learn and a few things that i guess I have taught myself and the fairy since he is obviously my husband. So number one, it's never going to be easy. They say that marriage is a partnership, a little tit for tat. And if you know where that is from, what movie wise anyways, you are awesome and you and I will be great friends. <laughs> yeah, mar marriage isn't easy. It's it's one of the hardest things in the world that you are going to do. There are, there are some jobs that literally are life and death. You know, police officers and firefighters and military personnel of all kind. Um, yeah, marriage can be a make or break for a person. It, it really can. It, there's a lot of intricacies in it. There's a lot of small things that people don't always tell you to help prepare you for the journey or experience or whatever you want to call it that you're about to go through there there's the small things there's the arguments that you're going to have because there's no such thing as a perfect marriage anybody who says they've had a perfect marriage is a fucking liar and they know it and they're just trying to make themselves look good the idea of a perfect marriage it would have been something that you would have seen in a TV series from the 50s and 60s, you know, like Leave It to Beaver, or The Andy Griffith Show, or all, all those other things. Um, there's just, there's no such thing, you know? And, and even in those shows, they show that there were some ups and downs in those marriages, but they never showed, like, the harsh reality. You know, like, I am Lucy, like, I love Lucy and things like that. It's just, that wasn't real. It wasn't true. That's not at all what a marriage is like. That is what television and that that is what Hollywood wants you to think that a marriage is like. That's not what a marriage is like. As a marriage is... It can go t several ways. It can be your average marriage. And your average marriage is one of those ones where, you know, you fight every now and again. Because you're gonna fight. There, there's just nothing that says you're not going to fight. There will always be that that one thing, or, or maybe more than one thing, that you guys just can't agree on, and you're going to argue about it every now and again, and believe it or not, that's normal. It, it really is to argue with your partner. It It's healthy, because it shows that you're still your own person, and that you haven't allowed yourself to become complacent and allowed yourself to become 100% what they are because 
it's just not what you want. You, you want your individuality. You want your self-identity. You don't want to lose that. So, yeah, you're going to argue every now and again. That happens. And, and, and there's really nothing you can do about it. So instead of worrying about it, just take the arguments as they come. Find a way to get through them. And then move on with your life. Because... That's literally all you can do. There's there's no turn around, there's no shortcuts. There's no if ands or buts. There's there's no back doors to, to get through an argument. And regardless of how big or small it is. And, and just ignoring it and walking away, that's only gonna make things worse. And I'm saying that to people because I know one or two of you I, I know a couple of you that are subscribed to this and you've done that once or twice and you've learned. <laughs> <laughs> and I have too, you know, you can't just walk away from the argument, you can't just ignore the situation, because that just makes it worse, and that just brings out resentment from the other person. Regardless of who's the one that's walking away, and regardless of who's the one that's still continuing to argue. Um, no, you can't let something get to you forever. Um, y you can't allow something like an argument or like a like and dislike or, or just a pet peeve or something to, to to just get you and and just keep eating at you until you can't take it anymore and then it's over because that happens a lot here in the united states if you think about it i mean like what 50 percent of all marriages and divorces here uh, that's ridiculous that's such a horrible number I'll, I'll admit it, the fairy and I have had our issues. You know, we've had our arguments, we've had our fights, we've had our walking away moments, which were the dumbest mistakes either one of us could have ever made. But we got through it, and we're still together, so that's that's always a good thing. You know, there, there are some things that he and I don't agree on, and there's nothing wrong with that. It just shows that we're still individuals and we're still growing and, and we're still going to be the people that we are. We don't expect the other person to change just to please us. I, I don't expect him to change certain things to please me. And I, I would hope, I hope, and I think, I don't think he does. I, I don't think he expects me to change certain aspects of myself just to please him, just to make his life easier. And again, vice versa. Because that's not what a marriage is about, and, and you shouldn't have to do that for the other person. If you're being told by your significant other, regardless of whether it's a guy, girl, alien, donkey, plant, whatever you are in love with, and whoever you are with, I don't judge. If they're saying that they want you, I mean, if they're trying to change you like that to make themselves happy, and there's something wrong with the relationship. You shouldn't have to change yourself, and the other person shouldn't have to change themselves to make it easier. Now, there are some things that you can change. You can change certain aspects. It's not like you have to be yourself 100% of the time. That's humanly impossible because as a species and as individuals, we grow all the time. I can honestly say I am more mature, and I... I'm different compared to my 19 year old self. I have changed and I have evolved. Mentally, physically, emotionally, psychologically, physically. Uh, even my stances on politics, which I will never talk about on this channel because politics are the devil. But yeah, I mean, I've changed those things over the years based on the things I've read, my experiences. So a person's always going to change. You're never gonna be the same person you are five years from now. Five years from now, you can do a total 180. And that's perfectly normal as long and and if your partner doesn't accept that, then there's something wrong there because you should be loved by the person that you're with, and again, donkey, dog, plant, whatever, <laughs> no matter who you are and no matter how much you do or don't change, and you should always keep hold of those things that you guys have that are in common. Don't ever let go of them. Well, the, the day that you let go of those things and the day that you realize that those things that you had in common are gone, that's when the relationship's in trouble. And you can do one of two, you, you can do one of two things. You can either one, 
give up and just let it sizzle away. Or two, you can work on it. And you could try and figure out, well, you know, we might not have these things in common anymore. What else do we have in common? You can try and get those things that you once had in common back again. You can find new things. There's there's possibilities. And if all else fails, go see counseling. Because believe it or not, that does help. <laughs> Marriage can be a beautiful thing. You know, you're, you're supposed to be with your best friend. You're supposed to be with the person that you want to spend the rest of your life with. That you want to grow old together with. And, and be buried next to when you die. And somebody you... You don't have to be with 24-7 because that would be a fucking nightmare. <laughs> um, for, for some people, you know, I, I love the fairy to death, but I don't think I can hang around him 24-7 always and forever. That's just a little too much for me. I do need my space. But that's us as people, you know, we're, we're human beings. We don't have to be around each other 24-7. I mean, I live with him, so I'm, I'm around him all the time anyways. I don't have to be around him every second of the day and you shouldn't have to be around your partner every second of the day because that's just a it's almost impossible uh because someone's gotta have a job and someone's gotta do like the shopping and and somebody else has gotta do other stuff so you can't be around each other 24 hours a day seven days a week that's just not gonna happen you gotta be okay with that you know i'm i'm okay with not being around him every second of the day he's got a very important job and If I have issues or if I need help, I can't always rely on him to do that. Sometimes I have to rely on myself. And again, that's okay for any of you out there as well. You know, sometimes relying on one person can also ruin a marriage. If, If you're way too clingy, if you're way too controlling, if you try anything and everything in your power to make sure that person is always with you and only with you, That could break a relationship. People need the space. As much of a social species as we are, we do have some introvert in us. And I am an introvert. I love being around people. I really do. But at times, I have to be alone to to kind of recharge my batteries and to just recharge myself kind of an ordeal and that's what it means to be an introvert you know you can be around people when you need when you're around people but at the end of the day you do have to have some of that alone time and a lot of people are like that and that's okay especially even in a relationship you and it's not a bad thing and and, then there's nothing wrong with that but not spending enough time together can be an issue as well there's a lot of balances in a relationship and there's a lot of gray areas in a marriage and and there's a lot of give and take and there's a lot of teetering back and forth between each other's needs and wants and agendas and, and and so many other things jobs and what you need out of life what you have to do and things of that nature there there's so much to it and it's it's a never-ending cycle. It's not, you know? And when you add factors like a mortgage or just bills in general, uh, jobs, food, um, kids, you know, is a huge factor. A lot of things change. And they can change for the better. They can change for the worse. But a marriage is never stale. There's no such thing as a marriage that is exactly the same as it was five years ago. Our marriage is not the same as it was five years ago. I can honestly 100% say that when we first got married compared to what we are now, there is absolutely... there. There's almost no similarity. There are a shit ton of differences. And it, it's not a bad thing for us because we were young and selfish and a little immature and you know I was a new mom and so there were a lot of things that went into that but we're older you know we're in our mid-20s um we have two kids we've moved for the third time as a couple and things are a little I wouldn't say easier but more steady things are progressing Because we, as individuals, are progressing and evolving. 
I mean, a marriage is constantly progressing. A marriage is constantly evolving. There, there's no such thing as having a marriage this, exactly the same year after year after year. Something always happens that changes something. Change is nature. Change is normal. If there was no change, you end up becoming bored of the marriage and then you want something different. You have to be able to be flexible in your emotions, in your feelings, your thoughts, the, the way you do things, the functionality of everything and anything about yourself and about your relationship status. Flexibility, in my opinion, is the number one thing to a marriage. You have to be able to bend. You have to be able to give and take. You have to be able to understand and, and comprehend what the other person is feeling and saying. You have to you have to be able to let them have their moments when they need them. Because we're humans, we need those moments. Those moments of pure raw emotion. We need those moments of, of hate and discontent. We need those moments of, of love and, and passion and compassion. We, we need those moments of crying and laughter and everything is, in my opinion, divided up into those moments of your life. And if the other person can't let you have those moments, then again, there's something wrong there. We, we all need those moments and we all need to be able to give them and we all need to be able to receive them. We all need to be able to let the other person have them and we need to let ourselves have them. I think that's one of the biggest problems in a lot of marriages today is because we don't, we believe that we have to be 100% perfect for the other person. That's why there are so many dating websites. That's why a lot of people do speed dating now. That's why, God, the apps all over the place and nobody wants to be in a relationship for longer than two or three months. And, and if you do get married, you know, if you make it past the first year, it's a fucking miracle. But my generation especially, we don't want that. But it's happened. You know, we, we have friends our age that have got divorces. I've had family and, and other friends get divorced as well. And it makes me nervous because I, I see them and I think, well, that's just another statistic. And, and I don't want to see that. I don't want to believe that. But that's what the world sees and that's what the world believes. And it's, it's not fair because I think each situation's different. And, and I don't think people are willing to put in the work to get through the issues that they have with each other. Or they're too stubborn and they're too self-righteous and they're too, well, I'm right, you're wrong, end of discussion, to be able to take the other person's feelings and thoughts into consideration. I think... A lot of people that get divorced today just don't want to put in the work. And when they want to get married, they want it to be easy. They don't want things to be hard. They want to have the same life goals, which isn't a bad thing. Having the same life goals is actually a fairly decent thing to have in a marriage. It doesn't have to be 100%. Um, but having a lot of the same goals together is a good thing. Even if you don't have the same life goals, again, you're not going to be the same five years from now as you are right, uh, as you were five years ago. So goals and things, ideals and beliefs change in those times, so you never know. But people don't want to work for it. And unfortunately, like I said before, marriage is the hardest thing in the world. It really is. It can make or break a person. It's caused people to kill each other. To kill themselves. It's caused people to murder. It's caused people to, to run away. It's caused people to do horrific things in our history. But it's also caused people to do amazing things in our history as well. And Love and, and marriage are, are two of the most powerful things a person can go through. Emotionally, physically, psychologically. It, in any way, shape, or form, mentally, and just every way, every which way a person can go through something, marriage and love can affect you in that way. It's ridiculous sometimes, and it's overpowering, and it's scary. 
I'll, I'll admit it, I've been scared once or twice during my marriage about what, how things were going to happen, what was going on right at that time. But you get through it. And you're glad that you worked for it. And you're glad that you got through it because well, if you didn't, you'd be alone. Nobody wants to be alone forever. Nobody wants to live out their entire lives as a hermit. You know, as human beings, we need that interaction. And yeah, marriage is one of the perfect ways to have that interaction, but at the same time, it can be one of the worst. It can be the greatest experience and journey of your life, but it could also be the worst experience and journey of your life. It's one of the most volatile and extreme things a person can go through. Like I said, it has and it can kill, it, it's killed people in the past. You love somebody so much, and if they leave you, you're so heartbroken, you literally die of a broken heart. It's fucking happened. You just, you can't give up. You can't allow yourself to give up on those things, and, and you can't allow yourself to just walk away sometimes. And there are other times where, yeah, walking away can be the best thing for you. But you always have to look at each and every one of your options before you walk away. Because five years from now, after you walk away, you could realize you made the dumbest mistake of your life. Or you could meet somebody that you really were supp or really are supposed to be with for the rest of your life and realize you made the best decision ever to walk away from that because then you found this person that's a million times better for you because you deserve more. So that's my take on marriage. It's, it's brutal but it's crazy and it's never the same thing and it's ecstatic and it's random and it's joyous and sad and it's it's an extreme and it's underwhelming and it's it's all these things at once throughout your lifetime it can be the greatest journey period that you will ever go through. But you have to be willing to put the work through it. You have to be willing to put the work towards it and continue to put the work and effort into it. You can't just give 50% and expect the other person to pick the rest of it up. Sure, every now and again, sometimes you just can't put enough into it because you've had a really hard time with something and that significant other just has to put that much more in for you. But you, when you can, you have to give 150%. And if you can't, you need to let the other person know, look, I've had a rough day. This has happened. This has gone wrong. Blah, blah, blah. I just can't do this today. I, I can't. I can't put in 150%. I, I just, I am drained. And hopefully the other person will understand and realize, wow, they need space or they need time or they need a bubble bath or god they need a drink for all of you who can legally drink <laughs> or they need a cuddle or it's we're gonna watch a movie and eat sushi and cuddle up on the couch in a big fluffy blanket kind of night because they need it it's taking care of yourself and taking care of somebody else that means just as much if not more to you than yourself Never think that somebody means less to you, because that will break a marriage. Never think that somebody's opinion is less important. Never think that somebody is worth less. Never think that something that somebody does isn't as important as what you're doing, because to them it could be the most important thing in the world. So I guess what I'm trying to say is marriage is the hardest, scariest, and most life-changing thing you will ever go through. And it's been all those things for me. And I've only been married for seven years. And I've still got another ungodly amount of years to go through. But it's something best shared with someone that you can look at every day and still get those butterflies. That you kiss every day and you still feel those fireworks. Somebody who you can lay in bed with and wake up with and feel like like it's the first time every time sometimes it's a good thing sometimes it's a bad thing I don't know so yeah that's 
that's my take. And I hope that for those of you who are in relationships, that it's this has helped you in some way. Because this, this is something I, I've wanted to talk about for a while now. And I just haven't really been able to find the words to do so. And, you know, with everything that I've gone through the last several years, since I was fucking nine years old, it just, it was time. Time for me to talk about the emotions, the hurdles, and the pain, and the extremes and the happiness that goes with it. Because it's, it's worth going through. And if anybody tells you otherwise, then they probably did it wrong. Marriage is always worth going through. It's always worth finding that one person and being with somebody for the rest of their life. For the rest of their lives. Because in the end, that person is worth more to you than life, it is, than life itself. And that is definitely a good thing. But I'm done talking about all the sappy stuff. <laughs> I just, like I said, I wanted to talk about this for a while now, and I, I figured, you know, seven years of experience, I, I think, I think I have the right to talk. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I'm Sarah Strike, and I love each and every one of you, and I hope to God I can get all this purple gunk out of my hair, uh, uh, not out of my hair, uh, out of my hands. Ugh. But I will talk, play, sing, unbox, craft, and do whatever for you guys in the next